Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. In this episode, I'm going to be doing purely Q&A from you guys that I've asked over Instagram. Now, there's a lot of questions today and this is actually my first time ever doing this kinds of session. Although I've been a bit obsessed with watching other YouTubers do these kinds of sessions. So I don't know how this is gonna go and I may have to split this into two episodes because I do have a lot of questions. And if you've been watching this channel, you know that I tend to digress, but I'll try to get to as many questions questions as possible and let's keep this light interesting and fun where possible I'll also include some b-roll so you can see what I'm talking about so let's just get this started question number one and this is I think one of the most frequently asked question are you single I am very very single but that doesn't mean I'm available if you know what I mean I don't really date I'm a very independent person I'm married to my work I find a lot of purpose in what I do, what I create, what I learn, what I teach. And that is very overwhelming for people sometimes. So in a sense, my top, maybe top three priorities will never include a life partner. I mean, I have like family, I have like my career that is not doing so well actually. And I've got a lot of hobbies and, and things that I really want to nail down. I have a lot of mission that I have not yet accomplished. So no dating and I'm happily single. Next question, how do you make time for dating with so many plant responsibilities? I guess simple answer to that is that I don't really date. I don't go on dates and things like that. So I actually save a lot of time. I don't even go out when my friends ask me to. I'm a little bit of a hermit. I've always been a little bit kind of an extrovert, but also going to my introvert self. From time to time, I like going out. I like, you know, going to parties, dinners, and catching up with friends. But at, in those occasions, I tend to yearn being alone. I, I'm always the first to leave uh, these events or these parties or these gatherings. And I just want to go home to my plants, go home to my, my own comfortable living space and just be alone. So I'm an omnivert, if that's the right term for it is when somebody can be either introvert or extrovert. How do you efficiently manage so many plants? Uh, well, I think I've shown in the last few episodes that it's turned into a bit of a disaster because I really had way more plants than I can handle. I have help at some point and I've been training people to help me with plant care and stuff and they were actually quite horrible until this month. I actually had a new person uh, she's been helping me caring for plants and she, I really like her initiative. I like that she's been helping me out with like, I don't know, just a lot of rescue stuff. She's been pointing out a lot of things that are not going well that I, <laughs> that I failed to uncover myself. So I'm really grateful for her because a lot of the plants are doing well and I cannot take full credit for the plants doing really well right now. But I'm in a very happy place and I'm very happy with her. But yeah, actually I do get some help with the plant care portion, although I try to do as much as possible. Again, I've been traveling quite a lot. I'm, I'm not home 40% of the time. I'm, I'm away it's too much actually. So having a system, training somebody to do it. And then also a lot of my plants here are sort of organized by different, not habitats, they're by different environments. For example, the backyard and also the front yard, we hose it down every day. Indiscriminately, we hose all the plants down pretty much the same way. Although there are some plants we want to keep an eye out for, like not to overwater it. But generally speaking, we hose them down and indoor plants, we basically check the moisture and we make sure that it's bone dry bet between watering. Because a lot of the indoor plants that you see around here, they dry out really slowly. We water this every three, four, five days. And when it comes to pest control and like antifungal, we have days where like, like once a month, we go through the entire collection, we spray it down. It literally takes only about three to four hours to do it. So it's not that long. So it, I guess the key here is to be efficient with your time to do everything at once where you can. And nowadays when we also gather like a few hours and the ladies help me out as well, we just kind of propagate things and we rescue things, we repot things kind of at the same time within those time frames. So it's actually not overwhelming. I'm getting the hang of it and I even even thinking that I might have room and time for a little bit more plants that I have been yearning for over the years. If you could be a plant for a day, which one would 
would you be? <laughs> That's a funny question, and I really liked it. It brought a smile to my face. And to be honest, I gave it some thought. I mean, a lot of the questions here, I didn't really think about it. I just wrote it down. But for this one, I had to really think hard. So thank you, whoever asked this question. But I would say I would want to be the Reflexia plant. It's the flower. It's the largest flower in the world. And it blooms every few years or so. It smells like dead corpse, by the way, but it looks so wonderful. And I want to, I'm kicking myself in the leg because Nyonya Destira, or Tia, her real name, asked me to come with her to visit one of these blooms a few months ago. But I couldn't. I was having dengue fever, so I could not go with her. But I'm going to insert some photos from her Instagram where she showcased these beautiful blooms that are so rare and so difficult to find. You got to find it at the right time as well but it is stunning and I would probably for a day be this flower just so that everybody can come see me and appreciate me and ask a lot of questions because there's a lot of really interesting facts about this plant which we're not going to go over today the favorite spot in your house and what's your favorite plants the favorite spot in the house would be my office upstairs. I did show it in my house tour episode. This is because it's got two windows, one, of, one on each side and one I can look down into my green wall in the back. And the front actually faces this area here. So we, I can see a lot of plants. I can see if visitors are here. I can always look down and see if somebody's knocking at the door. It really has a bird's eye view for a lot of the plant stuff and the living style that I really like. And yeah, that is my favorite area, but also because I spend a lot of time there working and I'm Honestly, working brings me a lot of joy. I'm a workaholic. I feel most productive. I feel most human. I feel most complete when I'm working in front of my laptop and when I'm doing these videos. And my favorite plant, uh, it says plants here, so it's plural. Uh, oh, I have so many favorite plants. My favorite plants, whatever I'm holding or looking at right now. But to be honest, ever since moving to this house, the one plant that kept growing, that didn't give me any fuss, and I do enjoy looking at it every day, is my ficus elastica. I've got one that's over there to my left. It's the green one. It's one of my first plants. It's gotten really, really tall. It's probably two meters tall. But I've also got the uh, ficus elastica that is burgundy. That's one from our video that we propagated. That video got so many views. Thank you so much. But I did keep one of the top cuttings and it's now like pretty tall and it's like right outside my bedroom by a window. So every time I open the bedroom door, I see it and it's just beautiful. I notice new details every time I see it. It is everlasting. It didn't bat an eye because my house renovation was a disaster. These plants were just in my house during the renovation. It was covered in dust. It was like getting no light. It was like getting improper watering, but that plant survived. So I really am grateful for it. How much do you spend on your plants yearly? Good question also. In the beginning, I did spend a lot of money uh, getting plants. They were becoming like, it was like the beginning of the COVID period. So things were getting just a ex bit expensive. I bought a lot of plants. Fortunately, I did propagate. I sold a lot of plants. And I'm proud to say maybe in 2021, I, I didn't spend any money if you consider the fact that I did sell some plants and I did spend money on plant care and I bought very little plants. I was really good about not buying too many plants in 2022 and I also I was moving and things like that. So I didn't spend too much money last year, but you know, whatever condition, financial conditions that you have, I would say don't overspend on plants. There are ways to grow your collection sustainably. In fact, that is probably a, a episode I should do about how to grow your collection without spending too much money. You could always buy a swap, sell and things like that and make a plan and meet people who are in the same area, in the same level as you in the hobby. Uh, and you guys can help each other grow your collections. So I might actually do that episode soon. That's a pretty interesting one to do, especially for beginner collectors. Now, do you complement your plants with artificial lighting? Any hacks on that? all the time. Uh, so I actually mentioned it many times in my videos that I have all these like cool lighting all over the house. They're not specific grow lights. I don't really believe that you have to buy really expensive specific grow lights for plants. Any light bulb will do. Uh, it's just a matter of like the intensity, the warmth that you want. Some lights are bluer, some are warm. So find something that's comfortable for your eyes that looks good for your space. 
sh uh, shine the lights on the plants. I'm not going as far as to measure the lumens or ca foot candle and all that stuff. I don't. I use my feelings, but I always try to give the plants as much light as possible. I do get a ton of natural lighting in here, but I do keep the lights on when it's daytime to give them that extra boost of light because all plants need light and I want my plants to be getting as much light as possible. And also be mindful to use energy saving light bulbs where possible. We don't wanna be spending a ton of energy because energy is very, very precious these days. So just be mindful of that. But you absolutely should supplement your plants with light where possible and you could have like one light source illuminate an entire collection as well so be efficient in that sense aglonemas why do they always die on me i can tell you first of all aglonemas need more light than we think they don't want direct sunlight but they do need very very bright indirect light i've got one back there i've got a lot of aglonemas on the struggle bus this is because while i do give my aglonemas enough light i overwater them and i'm assuming a lot of people overwater their aglonemas too they're very drought resistant plant they actually hate water they like to be in almost completely dry soil. So someone with a heavy handed watering habit like me, I tend to kill them very quickly. So I keep that in mind, aglonemas, they don't wanna be in direct sunlight, but they want it very bright and they really, really don't wanna be overwatered. Let them dry out completely between watering. If you forget to water them for a day or two, they are actually fine. And if you go like for the third day or so, their leaves may start to droop. But if you have unpotted an aglonema before, you'll know that their roots are actually nice and thick and worm-like. This means that they actually held on to a lot of this means that they actually hold on to a lot of moisture and they don't want to be sitting in wet soil when are you gonna show hardy photos of you uh lol well <laughs> that's a cheeky question so first of all i do work out a lot i'm very self-conscious i'm very very insecure about my body actually but i from time to time i do like not show off, but I like to express myself a little bit with plants and I don't mind showing a little bit of maybe sexy. I think there's a little bit of that with everybody. Come on, all of us, we want to be a little bit, mm, we just want to look really good for everybody, right? But there was this one time during the World Naked Gardening Day where I post completely nude, but I had like a, a plant in front of my naughty area, so you couldn't see that. But that photo was like, flagged down by Instagram and I was really, really upset because everybody else who did it, all the other influencers who did it, they were, by the way, they're way hotter than me and their photos were pretty raunchy. Um, but yeah, theirs were fine. So I, I take it that I live in a region, which is Indonesia, where it's very conservative and religious and maybe the community guidelines here are a little bit more strict, but I was disheartened by the, the fact that I could not even express my body in a way uh, that was, I, th I thought was tasteful and it was for a, a cause, it was for a day that was meant to celebrate our, our bodies, our, our natural selves. So that discouraged me and I don't think I'll be doing that again this year, unfortunately. And I guess this is a good time to, to bring awareness that there are parts of the world where we, we are not free to, to express who we are um, and express our bodies. So I'm a bit more conscious about that these days, but I also don't want you guys to call me out for my like sexiness or whatever. I really would love for everyone to kind of focus on the plants and you know what I do with the plants and my education. I hope that people value me for that rather than for my looks, if that makes any sense. Next question, what is your soil recipe for alocasia? For my alocasias, I give them my forest floor potting mix that's with like a bamboo, uh, uh, Oh gosh, it's been a while since I memorized my potting mix. It's with uh, the rice, ho uh, so it's with like bamboo shoots, twigs, perlite, burnt rice hulk, there's worm casting in there. I don't know if I'm missing out any f ingredient, but I'm gonna link that video up above so you can check out what, what it's made of and why I use those ingredients. Uh, so anything that is very airy and loose is great for them. They actually do wanna dry out quite a bit between watering, but they don't wanna dry out completely, so that forest floor type humid type potting media really works well for them. But I've also heard that they do really well with like semi hydro with pond and maybe some LECA. So do experiment with that because I've seen some really, really thriving alocasia in those kinds of self-watering setups. What one plant died during your move do you miss the most? Whoa, that's a tough one. I think I lost almost half of my plant collections. Fortunately, some of them I do have duplicates or backups, so I've been prop because I've been propagating them. But I lost 
I would say about 70% of my Hoya collection. They just did not like the move and I, they were placed somewhere where it was overwatered or underwatered or could be both. Uh, I couldn't ex understand exactly, but I lost so many Hoyas. And one of my most prized Hoya that I lost is the Hoya Compacta, Hoya Carnosa Compacta Hindu robe. I did a video on that, so I'm gonna link that up, up above. So I did propagate for, uh, for quite a few plants. I sold quite a few of them, but I kept one for myself. They are so slow growing. They grow like that little bit every three months. So uh, it, it was shriveled up here. I think it was probably overwatered at some point and probably lost the roots and then it became really, really thin. I saw it die very slowly because these guys, they died rather slowly. So it was a bit of a heartbreaking experience, especially seeing that plant. It was one of my first few plants, one of my first few loves, and that plant actually had flowered for me before. So I'll be getting another one. I'll be getting a replacement soon. But to answer the question, that is that one plant that I really kind of missed. Have you ever thought about traveling to the USA? All the time. I dream about it and I yearn for it. Um, there's a lot of things I miss about being in the United States. I lived there for 10 years. I used to live in uh, Tacoma, Washington, Florida, and New York City. And I mentioned in my personal channel that one of my biggest regrets was leaving the US. I did not fight hard enough to live there. I, I went to China to look for opportunities because there was a financial crisis in 2009. So I brought my business to China and yeah, I worked in fashion, just so you know. Going back to the US is not easy, first of all. Like, the cost would be insane. Uh, the conversion rate from Indonesian to US dollars is a lot. So this is why, like, when I get paid uh, with, with YouTube ad revenues in US dollars, I can live quite comfortably here in Indonesia. But conversely, I don't think I can afford, uh, you know, having a holiday or a trip to the United States, at least not in the near future. So I'll be saving up or unless somebody wants to sponsor a trip or I don't know, have an event there, I would be really happy for that to happen. But so far, it's it can only remain a dream uh, and I do, have faith that one day I will come back to the United States and it's going to be an epic visit. I do have many, many friends there still from my schooling years and I miss them terribly. So if you're watching this, I hope to see you guys soon. How do you water your plants? How much time do you spend? Um, okay, so I'll be doing a watering episode, so I'm going to go through that in, a, in another episode. But really quickly, I spend about an hour a day with watering. And again, I do have some help. So for a daily basis, somebody does come in and water all the plants for me. And I do have to kind of guide them along the way in the beginning. But they've gotten the hang of it. So I really, really trust them with watering for now. And um, it's not that hard and it's actually really fun. So I get Sundays on my own. The, the girls don't come in on Sunday and it is my favorite day to just wake up, check in on the plants and water them myself because I really, really love watering plants and that is really uh, not, the good, not a good thing too because I tend to overwater the plants. So the ladies actually have a little bit more of a discipline in terms of making sure plants are not overwatered than I do, if you know what I mean. But yeah, to answer the question for the pl plants that are growing in the back or in the front, I water them by hosing them down. Although sometimes I would be careful because some areas do need a little bit more water than other areas. And indoors, I would definitely check on them one by one. I would use feelings. I would check on the leaves, check the soil and before I water them. It takes about maybe 15 minutes to, wa to water this area. But again, I do water this area every three, four, or five days. Indoor plants don't require water as much as outdoor plants. Now, somebody asked about a good indoor light for plants like Monstera Albo. I'm sorry, I don't have the information for that, but if somebody has any like good suggestions, you can write it in the comment section down below. My trick with the Albo Monstera is just to give them very, very bright indirect light where possible. If it's indoors, you wanna supplement them with light. I've never measured my light, although I've been getting pretty good growth out of my plants. I use my feelings, make sure that the light source is not too close to the leaves in a way that would burn the leaves. Um, so yeah, I would say, 
I'm not the right person to answer that question, but feel free to jump in in the comment section down below. And I might actually do one last question because this video is becoming way too long. The last question I believe came from Suwat, which I did an episode on with Kanjarin Greens. I'm gonna link that up above. Thank you so much Suwat for asking this question because it is an excellent question to close this episode. He's asking variegated plant or a cool shaped leaf. This means like a philodendron UPI or Monserebral Mars Flame where the leaf shape is really, really interesting or something that's variegated like the Billy Thai variegated or the caramel marble, like which is, which do I like better? And the answer is, I like them both, but not the combination of it. So this means that if it's a UPI, I really like the UPI for its unique leaf shape. And I've seen the variegated ones come in the market lately. And I felt that the variegation was not only redundant, but it took away from the shape of the leaf. So I guess the, the answer is that I really, really do like the variety. I like, I like every, I don't think I can choose one or another. Uh, I would love to have all of them in my collection based on my sensibilities. I don't fancy all variegated plants just because they're variegated. And I don't always like all the plants that have a unique or beautiful leaf shape. So it's really subjective. It really depends on the plant. Sometimes it may depend on the, the time of the day. Sometimes I feel like I like certain things and sometimes I look at that same plant and I think, mm, maybe not. But I must say that the variegated like micans, Milano and the variegated Anthuriums, all these like velvety leaves that are va variegated, I'm becoming a little bit more soften up to them. When I first saw them, I thought that, well, maybe like that look weird, it looked like some bird pooped on them or something. But I've seen more and more come into cultivation as I've seen larger sizes, better variegations. Uh, I've been starting to appreciate those more. So I don't know if I answered that question well, but it is still a good question. I'm curious to know what your answer to that question is though, whether you prefer like a unique shape leaf for an aeroid or if you prefer the variegated. That would be an interesting comment to leave. So with that being said, I think I'm going to leave part two for the next episode. I don't know when I'm going to do part two, but I have the question saved. So if you are one of those who asked the questions, it's still here. I'm, I'll be answering them in another episode. I'm also curious to see how these kinds of episodes do. So I don't want to release like an hour long feature length film without knowing how you guys will respond to this. So let me know if you want more of this. But yeah, there are more questions to be answered in the next episode of Q&A. All right. Thank you so much. I wish you guys well. Happy growing and a great year, and a great year ahead. See you in the next one. Bye bye.